OK, so we're going to do an experiment today that Martin Polyakov has been on at us to do for a while. So we're finally, finally going to get, it, get around to doing it. He's very excited about it. And what we're going to talk about is, is deuterium oxide. OK, so deuterium oxide um, is often referred to as, as heavy water. Most elements exist in more than one form, which are chemically identical, but where the atoms weigh different amounts. And the difference between these different forms, which are called isotopes, is by far the biggest for hydrogen. So it's heavy water. So water is H2O, uh, as I'm sure everyone knows. And deuterium oxide is D2O. So hydrogen normally has one proton, but a second form of hydrogen called deuterium has a neutron as well. The neutron has the same mass as the proton, but is electrically neutral. It doesn't have a positive or a negative charge. The proton has a positive charge. So you can add this without affecting the atom. You still have just one electron. So it's just like hydrogen, but now you can see it weighs twice as much. So hydrogen is just a proton with a little electron buzzing around it, if you like, and deuterium is a proton and a neutron with an electron buzzing around it. In the universe and on the Earth, about one atom in every 7,000 of hydrogen is in this heavy form, deuterium. This means that if you are an average weight adult of about 70 kilos and making an assumption of about how much water is in your body, somewhere between six to eight grams of the water in your body is in fact heavy water which contains deuterium instead of hydrogen. Neil's dug out a really old school sample of deuterium oxide. So I like, this, I like the box. I finally worked out how to, how, to, how to open it, which is good. And what we have is a really, really old school sample. Look at the writing. It's all kind of like, I don't know, it looks like 1930s writing or something. I'm not quite sure how old it is, but it's a really old sample of D2O and it's sealed in a glass ampule so that, so that it kind of remains as it is in there. Where do you get all that stuff, Neil? So you can imagine water, which is H2O, has these heavier atoms of hydrogen, which have their own chemical symbol. So instead of being H2O, it's now D2O. And you can also, and as in your body, what you will have is just one hydrogen and one deuterium because you've got so much water. And the hydrogens and the, ox uh, the hydrogens and the deuteriums can s switch around between one molecule and another. But if you're really careful and do a careful separation process, you can get pure D2O. So today's grand experiment is we're going to make, well, we've made some ice cubes with normal water and some ice cubes with, of D2O, OK? So we've got an ice cube tray, which we're going to dig out in a minute. And we've actually just made some normal ice cubes. And what we're going to do is, um, it's an experiment I've never, I've never actually done before. Um, we're going to see if the, um, obviously you know that water, so ice, because um, it's less dense than water, um, actually floats in water. Um, and we're going to look to see if we make D2O ice cubes, whether they will float in the water or not. Because obviously deuterium oxide is a bit denser than water because it's heavier. D does not appear on the periodic table, but deuterium is used so much in all sorts of chemical experiments, that it has its own symbol. In fact, there is a third form of hydrogen, which has two neutrons, so its weight of three units, called tritium, which has a symbol T. But tritium is radioactive, so it's not used very widely unless you're trying to make nuclear weapons. And that's another story. Okay, but what we need to do first um, is we need to get rid of all the air because obviously there's a lot of air dissolved in, um, in, D, in D2O in anything. Um, so Neil has um, degassed some D2O and some water for us. So this is a vacuum pump here and what you can do is apply a vacuum to said liquid and pump out all of the air out of the, out of the liquid. So we're degassing it. So there we go. So what happened was that the, the air basically started to almost, if you like, boil out of the water. For a long time, I can't remember how long, but more than 30 years, it has always struck me that ice 
solid water is about 10% lighter than, than liquid water. That's why ice floats at the top of your drink or floats on the top of the pond in your garden. Okay, so what we did was we made some ice cubes um, with the degassed water. So these are the water ice cubes, the colourless ones. And what we did with the D2O ones, just so we could see the difference, um, is we put a little tiny bit of food colour in, only a small amount, so it shouldn't affect the experiment at all, but it's just so we can see the difference. Okay, so what we need to do now is, is fill these beakers with water, so we'll get some water. The question is, since D2O is 10% heavier than H2O, heavy ice solid D2O should be just about the same density, or perhaps slightly heavier, than liquid water. So it might be that heavy ice should sink in liquid water, in ordinary water. And I've always wondered what happens, and I've never been able to do the experiment. So what I'm going to do is, I hope this works, is pop a D2O ice cube in here, and I'm hoping it sinks. Yeah, I think that's sunk. I now know that my colleagues have done it, but I have no idea what's happened. My prediction and I've done lots of calculations, is that it'll just sink. But I might be wrong. I might have forgotten to include something in my calculation. So what we've got is we've got ice in water here, and ice is less dense than water, so it's floating. And in this one, we've got the deuterium oxide ice, so frozen deuterium oxide, and that is denser than the water, so it's sunk to the bottom. We, we did the experiment, and the D2 ice did sink and it sank quite gradually. Yeah. But here's what happened. Over the course of the next hour, as the D2O began to melt, it gradually, the cube began to rise towards the top of yeah. the water. Have you any idea why that would have happened? I think what has happened is that the D2O molecules on the surface of the ice will have exchanged with hydrogen. And I think also that the melting point of D2O is different from that of ice. So that you probably have some melting and reforming of the ice on the surface so that it gradually gets less dense. And you've got to remember that if you have a cube, most of the mass is near the outside. So if you change the composition of the ice on the outside, it makes a big difference to the total weight of the block. Obviously, it's quite a problem. How do you make D2O? Because normally the deuterium in the water is diluted by a factor of 7,000, which for chemists is really pretty dilute. 